Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Moss Pawn and Gun. And you guessed it, we finally reached a point where we're at our Glock meltdown here. We've got a Gen 3 Glock 17 with an auto sear in it. And we're also running a Mako uh, shoulder stock. I want to give a special thanks to Quiet Riot Firearms down here in McDonough, Georgia for helping us out uh, to put this together. Uh, without their help, this definitely wouldn't be possible. I also want to thank SGM Tactical for providing us with this pile of magazines here. We're going to, you know, see how they run. They're kind of new to the market, uh, so we're not really sure how well they're going to do, but we figure if they can survive this trial by fire, they must be pretty decent. They're only like 20 bucks retail, so pretty fair deal on uh, aftermarket Glock mags. We're going to run those. Uh, also, I want to say special thanks to Piney Mountain for providing us with some 9mm tracer. We're going to go ahead and torch this little gun up. We're going to run it until it fails. Uh, we have an idea that probably the uh, polymer guide broad in this gun is going to fail within probably the first thousand rounds. But don't worry, if it fails, we've got a steel replacement that we're going to put in it and keep running until the gun fails. So if we do get a stoppage, we'll stop, quickly address the situation. Hopefully we can just replace the guide rod and we're going to run a metal one. And then at that point, I ain't no telling what's going to happen with a metal one in there. So uh, we've got a lot of ammo to get rid of and very little time, so let's get to it. Oh boy, wish me luck. I'm gonna, now, one thing I wanna mention, I'm gonna be making some sort of strange motions because I've got this welding mask on, guys. So if you see me looking kinda of funny, don't worry. Here we go. Moving on to 115 grain wolf with every fifth a tracer. Steel case. Ooh, I'm getting some rate of fire change, guys. Rate of fire's changing a little bit, it's kind of odd. We're gonna keep running. Come on, baby. Well, she's running like a top, fellas. Okay, uh, looks like we've had a failure. I'm gonna clear the gun, fellas. Woo. Yeah, you guys are gonna wanna see this. All right. The gun is clear. Yeah, she's hot. 
Okay, I think we've definitely uh, melted our guide rod. And uh, <laughs> here it is, actually. Whoa. <laughs> we cooked our guide rod. All right, so I'm going to try to pry this thing apart. Give us just a moment. We're going to try to hurry here, see if I can get some help, and uh, see if we can make it run again. All right, guys, I had to drench my hands down with water in this uh, bucket of water below me here just to be able to hold this thing. But I've got the metal guide rod in it. It's only been about one minute since we just had that last failure. The guide rod melted out of there. We've got polymer all skanked in the dang thing. There's actually a good bit of polymer actually kind of digging in the chamber. We'll see uh, if maybe when we shoot it, it'll just draw all that crap out of there and keep running. Let's try it. All right, we're getting back to work. We'll see if it, it may not even chamber around with that stuff in there like that, but we're gonna try it. Cleaned it right out of the chamber. All right, let's keep going. I gotta dunk my hand in water because the heat's transferring through to my uh, to my hand. Something came out and melted. <laughs> I guess it's drawing pieces of itself and shooting itself out of its own barrel. How badass is that? There was a little piece of polymer that got drug into the chamber. I just pulled it out with a pair of uh, pliers. Back in business. I don't know what's going on, but this chupacogger just won't die. If I keep shooting it, it won't die. Okay, the bottom frame pin looks like it's sheared off from heat and it's just pulled out of the right side of the gun. So right now we're only running a half a pin 
and uh, I'm gonna keep running it. Hell with it. That's it. She's not gonna run no more, guys. Let's pull it apart and have a look. Something's happened, I don't know, but uh, yeah, she gave a very valiant effort. So let's investigate what happened. The frame is drooping in the front. That's pretty freaking cool right there. We'll see what happened. One thing I have to observe from this video that impressed me a lot, how about how brave that cock was for sitting there on that table the whole time and let me shoot right over his little head. That was pretty amazing, but getting to the serious part, this Glock really went the extra mile. All right, I'm very, very surprised. And uh, we disassembled the gun. Uh, everything looks fine. The guide rod, the polymer guide rod that came with the gun melted, we knew that. All right, we stopped, replaced it. Uh, the steel guide rod, good to go. Recoil spraying, good to go. The barrel uh, got a little bit of rifling stripped out from the muzzle end and from the lead end inward, because that's usually when a barrel was going to uh, wear, is from the chamber forward and the muzzle back. So we did get a little bit of wear there because we got a lot of heat going. The slide is pretty much good to go. Uh, we did snap uh, the control arm off of the auto sear because it had a little cut in it and the metal was a little bit thin right there. All we can think is that from all the jostling, it snapped off. The front sight post stayed in place, but the tritium insert cooked and jumped right out of there. But other than that, the slide is pretty much safe to use. The upper on the gun, pretty much good to go. The lower is where we started to see some problems. First, uh, as the frame began to get pretty warm, it was starting to kind of droop a little bit and where the guide rod and recoil springs sit in the frame right here, of course, it kind of acted as a heat sink and really drawn a lot of heat to this area. Uh, that heat did not transfer to the takedown pin, so the takedown pin uh, moves just fine. All right, so wasn't enough heat build up there to cause that to melt in place or to cause the frame to melt around it. Uh, the trigger did begin to melt. Uh, you have the small pin that is on the Glock here on the top side is a metal pin. So you had the recoil block and this pin worked as a giant heat sink and transferred a bunch of heat to the trigger uh, axis pin and the trigger itself and the trigger melted. All right, and what it did is it melted and it swelled and it's touching the side of the frame and it's not allowing it to reset. But if had I known that when we still had the gun together and we were still running full auto, I surmise to say that the gun would likely still run, okay? The actual trigger bar is good, the ejector's good, uh, everything else looks pretty good, mag latch, no uh, adverse effects there. Uh, the gun is actually not that dirty, okay, after all of those rounds. So the first trip with the polymer guide rod, we ran 19 mags, giving us a total of 589 rounds. Uh, those mags were loaded between 31 and 33 rounds. We, d we don't really know for sure. We just topped them off pretty much as much as we could fit in there. All right, for the second go around, total round count with the metal guide rod after we stopped to fix the problem, we ran 39 magazines, giving us a total of 1,209 rounds. Guys, pretty much the conclusion we have to come to is that you cannot carry enough ammunition on your person to destroy a Glock with normal shooting conditions, okay? There's people out there that love Glocks. There's people out there that hate them. There's people that tolerate them. I'm one of those guys that I like Glocks. When it comes to life and liberty and duty use and using this against people that are gonna do you harm, a Glock is an excellent service pistol. It's an awesome gun for defending yourself. They're very accurate. They're extremely reliable. They're the most unisex looking dang things in the world. They're ugly as hell. They don't fit everybody's hand well, but tough, all right? If you can get past it as a tool for life and liberty, they're definitely a great gun. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the gun back together, all right? Because I think that the gun will still fire with a broken auto sear lever with a melted trigger. I'm just gonna manually push the trigger forward after I put the gun back together. And I think the gun will still function. All right, it took a little bit of finagling, but we did get the gun back together. Um, other than the bar flexing a little bit, I think, 
I think we might be able to get it to run full auto again. So let's try it. One mag. We're not going to get crazy here. All right. She lives to soldier on another day. I think that proves pretty definitively, guys. Had I known that that trigger melted like that and was causing it to flex, I might have been able to perform some type of immediate action and keep the gun functioning. It might have gone longer, but I think this video is pretty dang definitive. I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully you learned a little bit about the Glock. It's an amazing pistol. Thanks for watching. Many more meltdowns on the way. Stay tuned.